Congratulations to the University of Oklahoma on winning the, uh, the Big 12 championship. Um, obviously, the last time our two teams will be in this conference. Um, you know, it's, uh, it was um, you know, a tough way to start for us. Obviously, you can't make mistakes against a team of that quality. They expect to get away with it in the first innings. I thought that uh, Sitlali Gutierrez certainly didn't deserve to give up uh, the five rounds that she gave up. She pitched well enough to win the game. Had 10 strikeouts against a potent offense um, and pitched great. But, uh, you know, like I tell our team, we've got to find ways to learn from the adversity today. Uh, obviously, it was tough. I mean, in their backyard with a good crowd, they were always supporting them. Um, I thought that, uh, you know, we had a couple of opportunities there. Reese Atwood had an absolute bullet to center field that Coleman almost misplayed, but made a great recovery, and that's what she does all too often, especially against us, it seems. But, uh, you know, she made the play, and, and we didn't make the plays, and it's a game of inches, and that's what happens. And so we've got to kind of find a way to recoup from that, learn from it, and be ready to go for the postseason. Question? Mike, obviously you, you guys got him uh, twice in Austin. Just maybe what was – was there anything different about today, or is it just as simple as though you made a few extra plays? It was mistakes. It was defense. You know, really, you know, I, I'd like to see it. You know, and, and truthfully, I think, you know, a couple of the hits given up, I think said a lot of the issues are one probably made a couple of mistakes there to pitches in big situations. And, like, again, we'll go back, review it. We'll take a look at that and see what adjustments they made. Um, but, you know, kudos to them. They That's what you do. Good teams make the most of the mistakes that, that have happened to happen with, uh, with pitching. And uh, that's what they did. Mike, how difficult was Maxwell today to try to work against? Well, you know, she's got a lot of different stuff, and it seems like every time you face her, she's throwing something a little bit different out there, different speeds, different uh, movement. Uh, you know, they're using um, effective velocity pretty well. Um, you know, so she's she's tough, you know, without a doubt. I'm sure it's tough to think about it in the loss, but you throw 10 Ks, just kind of what was working for you, and how can you carry that into the FLC? I think going, or going into the game, I was, like, fully confident in myself, just going in, like, knowing, uh, how good we are and just like trusting my defense and offense and uh, definitely just like mixing speeds. They're a team that adjusts very fast, so you gotta keep them off balance. And also just working with the upstrike zone, uh, just working with what he's giving me. For both of you, when you're doing the postseason, how nice is it to prepare for new teams, to scout new teams? And this is a refreshing to see new faces to scout new teams. <laughs> um, I think it's kind of exciting just seeing like new faces. I mean, we play, every team in the conference like multiple times. So it's nice seeing like a new face, a new team, especially if we're hosting regionals, just them coming to our home grounds and having our um, home, like I guess, home advantage there. Yeah. <laughs> and coach, for you just to see new faces and just put together a new scouting report and get someone new. Sometimes it can be difficult. You know, you face a team like St. Francis. I think that's what we faced this game last year. And it's like there's not much information on there because you know most of us use Synergy programs that are out there with a lot of video, and you can just pull it up. Uh, but so it becomes a little more of a challenge. Um, but we go back to the old school, the old ways. You know, <laughs> using the phone and calling people. And, but um, it is kind of refreshing, you know. But also, you know, there's um, you know there's some there's some pressure there too because pretty much just about every team in the postseason is going to have at least one good quality pitcher. And that's when things get a little more difficult. Let me switch gears. When you're familiar with a team like Oklahoma, when you look at their batting order, what one or two names on that batting order you look at and say, these are the two toughest outs on this roster? Well, Kenzie Hansen, for, definitely for sure. You know, she's always been that one that's stepped up in the big moments over the years. And, um, you know, she she cuts her swing down. She knows when to go for it and when to cut down and just drive the ball like she did tonight. Uh, you know, those first couple of runs, I think, uh, she got a nice little hit the other way into the gap. Um, and then, of course, Jada Coleman's always kind of been that, that thorn on our, our side. I remember we were up two runs, and she got the home run to tie the game in Oklahoma a couple of years ago. Um, you know, so those are the ones that are and, – and she can do multiple things, too. It's not just, you know, one-dimensional, like, hit home runs or whatever. Um, but, you know, those are two. I mean, you can name the whole lineup if you want. But, uh, you know, the kid at the bottom does a great job, too. <laughs> she, she finds ways to get on base. Mike, you, uh, you know, obviously both these teams have a – great chance of being really highly seated tomorrow when those uh, pairings come out. How do you feel like the, the, those top three shake out in the, the Big 12 with, uh, you know, how high they've got a chance to be? Yeah, that's a, that's a good question. You know, you just never know. There's always the RPI and the, and the now KPI. And now there's, a, there's always the human factor behind the doors that you don't know quite what they're going to do. 
Um, but you know, you, you look at the volume of work, there's truly about volume of work throughout the year with our ranking from RPI number one throughout the season and having played a tough schedule in a, in a tough conference, you know, it would be tough not to put us in the top three or four uh, for sure and hopefully number one. I, I mean, I don't know what they're going to decide to do. I mean, even though we lost tonight, I think that you know, our volume of work, if that's what they're going to call it, and who we've played and, and, and how tough his comp, uh, schedule we've played, I think it'd be tough to, to pass us up. As good as uh, you guys, Oklahoma State, and you has been this season, just when you talk about coming into the Big 12 when you did, coming out of the, the Pac-12, uh, whenever you did, and leaving the, the, uh, the Big 12 and going to the SEC, do you, is it better now than whenever you came? Are you leaving it better than whenever you came in? Yes, I think so. I mean, you know, uh, you look at this year, I mean, you know, the, the, there's more parity within the conference. I think UCF's going to become a better squad over the years. I think BYU showed they can beat anybody. They've got some power up there. They just need a little more depth in pitching. Um, you know, uh, Houston obviously beat us. You know, well, they got an eight run inning on us. Um, so you know, that makes it exciting. It's better than having just one or two teams, you know, trying to dominate. So I think with uh, Arizona State coming in, you know, I think Utah is the right coming in. Yep. And Arizona, uh, you know, that's going to add in three quality clubs. So obviously you see what Utah has been doing. I don't know what happened tonight with their Pac-12 conference. I think it's going on right now. Uh, but they've shown that they're a quality team over time. Anything else? Thanks, guys. Thank you. Appreciate Thank you. it. Good luck.